Pattern for Children and Youth July 26 In Heavenly Places And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man. Luke chapter 2 verse 52 While on earth Christ lived in the home of a peasant, he wore the best garments his parents could provide, but they were the humble garments of the peasants. He walked the rough paths of Nazareth and climbed the steeps of its hillsides and mountains. In his home he was a constant worker, and left on record a life filled with useful deeds. Had Christ passed his life among the grand and the rich, the world of toilers would have been deprived of the inspiration that the Lord intended they should have. But Christ knew that his work must begin in consecrating the humble trade of the craftsmen who toil for their daily bread. He learned the trade of a carpenter that he might stamp honest labor as honorable and ennobling to all who work with an eye single to the glory of God. And angels were his attendants, for Christ was just as truly doing his father's business when toiling at the carpenter's bench as when working miracles for the multitude. He held his commission and authority from the highest power, the Sovereign of Heaven. Christ descended to poverty that he might teach how closely in our daily life we may walk with God. He could engage in toil, bear his part in sustaining the family in their necessity, become accustomed to weariness, and yet show no impatience. His spirit was never so full of worldly cares as to leave no time nor thought for heavenly things. He often held communion with heaven in song. The men of Nazareth often heard his voice raised in prayer and thanksgiving to God. A fragrant influence was diffused to those around him, and they were blessed. His praises seemed to drive away the evil angels and fill the place with sweet fragrance. His life was in conformity to the life and character of God. His childhood and manhood ennobled and sanctified every phase of practical life. He was a perfect pattern in every place. He passed through the experience of infancy, childhood, and manhood without a stain upon his character. The Review and Herald, October 24, 1899